I record Adobe Captivate tutorials on procedures that I use myself. One such topic that I haven't covered before now is shared actions. I simply haven't had a reason to use them in my everyday work. I would use advanced actions for the navigation controls I would put at the beginning of my course and display for the rest of the project. One problem is you can't have items displayed for the rest of the project and be contained in fluid boxes. I'm going to attempt to solve it today using shared actions. Let's get started. So if we take a look at my Adobe Captivate screen here, you can see that I've got the basics all set up ready to go. Um, I've got on this a slide one, I've got a back button and I have a forward button and then I have what's ultimately going to be a play pause button. Like always, one of the most important things that you can do with your objects that you create in your Captivate project is to make sure that they're labeled properly. So in this case here, play pause is labeled as play underscore pause. My next button is forward and my back button is back. And we're going to start to build our advanced action for the play pause button. Currently it's set for no action. So let's change that to execute advanced action. Uh, the reason you start with uh, an execute advanced actions is that you, during that process, you simply save it as a shared action and then can use it for other, uh, other objects within your project later. So let's start with that. I don't have any scripts in this project yet. I'm going to click on the advanced action icon and this will open up my advanced action window. Now I'm going to call this play pause toggle because this is going to be a conditional action that's going to look at a variable which I'll set up in just a moment and see what the current condition of the project is. So we're going to start off with uh, checking off a conditional tab. But before we do this, we're going to need to create that variable. So let's click on the variables button in the bottom right hand corner here. This will open up the variables window and we'll click on add new. And we'll call this V underscore playing. And its initial value will actually be one because a default state for playing in an Adobe Captivate project is that it is starts off playing. And only once you put an action uh, such as pause, will it actually pause. So we're gonna save it. I know normally we would, we would uh, probably create a value of zero. In this case, the default value will be one. And I'm gonna close this here. So we're gonna look at that variable first of all. And we're going to say if variable v underscore playing is equal to the literal value of one. In other words, the course is playing right now. We're going to pause the course. And we're going to change the state of my play pause button because I've already created uh, a different state for it to show that it's paused and we'll switch it to a play button and we'll also update that variable so we will assign v underscore playing with the literal value of zero because we paused the course. The easiest way to deal with this though because uh, we're going to need some else statements in here is we're going to copy all of this stuff here. I'm going to hit copy, go down to the else statement, and we'll click on the else statement and paste that in. The reason I'm copying and pasting it is because the else action is very similar to the uh, actions that are listed in the if portion uh, or the top section. So instead of pausing it, we're going to continue. And instead of changing the state of play pause to the play button, we're going to put it back to normal and we're going to assign V underscore playing with a value of one. Now, normally at this stage, what you would do is you would click on save as an action, but in this case, we're going to save as a shared action. And what happens is this field shows up or this series of fields shows up. 
So you can give it a different name if you choose at this point. You can write a description here. This is the toggle control for the play pause button. Might seem obvious now, but maybe a few months from now when you're working on this course, it might not seem so obvious. So we just need to put a description next to each of the parameters that need to be input. In this case here, the play pause button and the paused state of that button and the playing state of that button. So let's go ahead and save this and we can just click on OK and we don't need to save as action. We just can close this window now and for that play pause button we can select from the action list execute advanced actions in this case execute shared actions and then you see it comes up automatically because it's the only shared action I presently have you'll see this little icon with a P in it within a within a set of curly brackets uh, if you click on that you of course will be able to select the variables or the parameters that you need to select so in this case here we need to select the play pause button that's easy to do because that's the only option on the list and we're going to choose the state of that button for when it's paused in this case here it is the play button and the playing state of that button is the normal state and now we can save this and here's where things are really cool now if i were to select this button just a note of warning here while it does give me the option to select rest of project, remember that as soon as I do that, this particular button is going to get unlocked from the fluid box and kind of break the flow of my navigation controls. So I'm going to leave it for rest of slide. And here instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this slide. And I'm going to duplicate it, let's say, four times in total. We'll just change that to a 2 and this to a 3 and this to a 4. Now here's what's really cool. Normally if I was pointing at a unique advanced action, that advanced action would still be pointing at the button on slide 1 and making changes to that item. But because I did this as a shared action, it's automatically going to move that shared action and point to the objects that are on slide two, slide three, and so forth. Let me show you an example of that. Here on slide four, I'm gonna select my play pause button, go to the actions tab in the properties inspector, and let's click on the parameters here. Notice that play pause is play pause underscore 15, because of course it's renamed the label uh, when I created additional copies of that slide. But you'll notice that everything has been updated. It's got the proper name and of course uh, it's maintained the pause state and the playing state for that button. So let's test it out and make sure that it works. Let's preview this project. It's uh, going to play in a browser for us. So here we are on slide one. If I press pause, you'll notice the button changes to a play button. And I've kept the uh, the regular navigation controls running here so that you can see that. If I press it again, it continues to play, pause, play. And then of course I can go to the next slide, do the same thing as often as I wish. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.